In his paper in 1964, Bell showed that in a particular kind of behavior that could be seen in an EPR experiment, any local hidden variable theory would give a result that would be different from the predictions of quantum mechanics. The experiments agree with quantum mechanics and disagree with any local hidden variable theory. The key experiment involves a correlation between the results we would see in the two different apparatuses for measuring the polarization of the two different photons. In particular, we need to look at those correlations when the two apparatuses have their axes rotated at an angle. For certain ranges of angles, the results for local hidden variable theories should obey a set of inequalities known as Bell's inequalities. The experiments, however, do not obey the inequalities, therefore disproving any local hidden variables theory. This result is independent of whether quantum mechanics is correct, though it's worth pointing out that the quantum mechanical calculations do apparently agree with the experiments. Let's look at this argument in more detail. An EPR pair of photons, so here we have a source and we have our photons, in this Bell state we've been looking at, for example, so here it is again, travel to two different measuring apparatuses. So here's our left measuring apparatus with polarizers set for horizontal and vertical to separate out photons to measure them. And here's our right measuring apparatus that similarly has polarizers set to horizontal and vertical to measure the photons in different polarizations. And the axes of these apparatuses are aligned with one another. Now, quantum mechanics predicts that if we measure one photon to be horizontal, say the left one, then we will find the other photon is also horizontal when we put the photons in this state to start with. Similarly, if we measure one photon to be vertical, the other photon will also be measured to be vertical. This is the behavior we find also in experiments. With aligned axes, both apparatuses measure the same polarization for these Bell state photons. Suppose we assert that the two photons have the same polarization and that actual polarization is the hidden variable. We presume we just don't know what the polarization is until we measure it. If that polarization is not aligned with either the horizontal or vertical axis, then each photon has a probability of being measured to be either horizontal or vertical. And many times we will therefore see the two photons being measured to have different polarizations. Hence, this simple hidden variable theory using local polarization as a hidden variable will not work. We could extend this theory to agree with experiments when the polarizations are aligned with one another in the apparatuses, though we have to introduce attributes and behavior not present in current models for photons or electromagnetic radiation. For example, we can simply say that each photon has some other attribute that causes it to emerge on a particular axis from the polarizer. And since both photons have the same attribute, they both emerge always on the same axis. Bell, though, considered what would happen once we misalign the two measuring apparatuses. That is, once we rotate the polarizer axes of one apparatus with respect to the other. He showed there are inequalities relating the correlations between the measured results on the two different apparatuses that must be obeyed for any local hidden variable theory. These limiting correlations can be tested against experiment. When we do the experiments, we find that the experimental results violate these inequalities. So no local hidden variable theory agrees with the experiment. It's also true that the experimental results do agree with the quantum mechanical prediction for such EPR states. Hence, reality is not local. We cannot describe reality as we see it based only on local properties. To be forced to this conclusion, 
we don't even need to believe that quantum mechanics is correct. Even if quantum mechanics is wrong, and its agreement with the experimental results is merely a coincidence, it is still not apparently possible to construct a local hidden variable theory that agrees with the experimental results. So now we're going to look at a simple example of a Bell's inequality. Before we consider our example, though, we're going to look at the following statement. The number of young women is less than or equal to the number of right-handed young people plus the number of left-handed women. Now, this statement is correct. It might be obvious to you, but probably at a first glance, it is not quite obvious. It may be easier, however, to see this with a Venn diagram. So consider a Venn diagram showing the set of left-handed people, so they all fit within this circle, the set of women, they all fit within this circle, and the set of young people, so they all fit within this circle. We can show the sets of right-handed young people. So here's all of the right-handed young people. It's all of the young people who are not left-handed. We can show the left-handed women. So here's all women, and here's all left-handed people, and this intersection here of these two is the left-handed women. We can also show all the young women. So here's all of the women, and here's all of the young people. So this intersection here is the set of young women. The set of right-handed young people plus the set of left-handed women includes all young women. Plus possibly other people too. All of these people in here are included in this union of these two sets and also all of these people in here. But it's certainly true that the set of right-handed young people plus the set of left-handed women includes all young women. So, the number of young women is less than or equal to the number of right-handed young people, which is this area here, plus the number of left-handed women, which is this area here. Now, for the sake of argument, Let's presume a deterministic theory of some kind in which the photon state has some local attribute, a local attribute being something that comes with the photon, and that local attribute determines from which port of a polarizing beam splitter it will emerge for any angle of the beam splitter. This local attribute is therefore a local hidden variable that definitely determines the result. So we're going to look at a local variable theory, and in our local variable theory, we imagine that each photon has a definite property of some kind that determines which axis of the polarization splitter it comes out of. And each different possible value of this local variable, we don't know what it is, is represented by some point on this sheet of paper here, as it were. So different values of that local variable correspond to different points on this sheet of paper. And we're going to draw a Venn diagram on here, just like the one we had for the young women. So we can draw a Venn diagram, each possible value of the local hidden attribute or variable corresponding to a particular measurable set of behaviors with polarizers at any angle is represented by a point on this Venn diagram somewhere or other. We will be interested in three possible angles for a polarizer. That would be 0 degrees, 22 and a half degrees, or 45 degrees. And depending upon which one of these we choose, we're going to have three specific possible results for our experiment. Either if we've chosen the polarizer at 22 and a half degrees, perhaps the result of the experiment would be the photon would pass that polarizer. We will count all the times it does that. And that would be all of the points that would lie within this circle on our Venn diagram. Another possibility is that we set our polarizer to zero 
and we count the number of photons that pass when we have the polarizer set to zero. So that would correspond to this circle on our Venn diagram. And another possibility is that we set our polarizer to 45 degrees, and in this case, we're going to count the number of photons that do not pass through the polarizer. So these are our three possible settings for our polarizer, and we're going to do three different kinds of experiments, and in each case, always preparing the photons the same way, we're going to count the number that go through at zero degrees, and then in another experiment, we'll count the number that go through at 22 and a half degrees. And then in another experiment, we'll count the number that do not go through when the polarizer is set at 45 degrees. All of these three regions can overlap. That can still be in agreement with all of the observations that we make of polarizations in detectors with photons. We can, however, only perform one test on a given photon. So with one photon, we can perhaps find that it's in here, but we've got no information as to whether it is also in this region. We just know with our one experiment with the polarizer set at 22 and a half degrees that the photon's hidden variable corresponded to some point inside this circle. But we don't know if it also was within this circle, for example. So no matter how we've got the polarizer set, we can only tell whether it's within one of these circles with our one photon. And we can't use that photon again because the test may have changed the state of the photon in some way. So with one photon, we cannot actually figure out how many lie within any of these overlap regions, for example. With our EPR photon pair source, however, we have two photons to use in two different experiments, one on the left and one on the right. And we already know that photons prepared this way always behave identically for identically set polarizers. So therefore, we believe that those two photons with their local hidden variables must both correspond to the same point on this Venn diagram because they always behave identically for identically set polarizers. So we can now do two experiments at the same time. We could, for example, have the polarizers for, say, the right photon set for 22 and a half degrees, so we could count the number of photons that lie within this circle. And at the same time, for the other photon, we could have the polarizer set at zero degrees, so we could count the number of photons that land within this circle. And hence, we can deduce the number that land within this intersection, or equivalently, the number that don't land within that intersection, for example, the number in this region down here. So with our two photons that, on our local hidden variable theory, because we always get the same answer when we set the polarizers the same, they must correspond to the same point on this diagram, and hence we can do two experiments corresponding to one point on the diagram, and hence we can probe the overlap regions or non-intersecting regions of this Venn diagram. So, to repeat, both photons must correspond to the same point in the Venn diagram, so we can use one of these photons for one test and the other photon for another test and therefore we can probe the overlap regions. The probability that one photon will pass at zero degrees while the other will not pass at 45 degrees is this region in here. And that has to be less than or equal to the probability that one photon will pass at zero degrees and the other will not pass at 22 and a half degrees. That's this region in here, plus the probability that one photon will pass at 22 and a half degrees and the other will not pass at 45 degrees. That's this region in here. So this is the same Venn diagram inequality as we had for the young women, but with different meanings now for these different areas. But clearly, the probability that one photon will pass at zero degrees while the other will not pass at 45 degrees has to be less than the sum 
of these two areas here, the points within those. The number of points within this region has to be less than the number of points within the sum of that region and this one. That's obvious. If we find an experiment, however, that violates this inequality, then we have to throw out deterministic local hidden variable theories. For example, the idea that the photon has a variable that it carries with it that determines the result of the polarization measurements we make. However, experiments do violate this inequality. Therefore, deterministic local hidden variable theories cannot explain reality. This conclusion is independent of the correctness of quantum mechanics. We did not use any quantum mechanics in that argument we just put together. So this argument applies to all deterministic local hidden variable theories. Hence, if quantum mechanics is to explain the results of experiment, quantum mechanics cannot be explained by local hidden variable theories either. Incidentally, calculating the quantum mechanical prediction of this experiment is relatively straightforward. And it does also predict violation of Bell's inequalities. And it does also apparently agree with the experiments. This is a remarkable conclusion. <laughs>